Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu, and I hope you're doing well. Today what I wanted to do is talk about pressure and the types of pressure that we see in life, but the good things that come from pressure. So example number one, think of a diamond. In order for a diamond to be made, it needs to be put under tremendous pressure. And that pressure is what creates the diamond that we see is so beautiful today. You still have to clean it up a little bit, you know, cut it a little bit to make it shine, but, but still, that's what creates a diamond. A while back, I did a video of a lobster. How did the lobster get bigger? Well, he had to deal with a lot of pressure from the shell that was inside him. Then he had to shed the shell and then live in a situation where he was unprotected by, by an exoskeleton, but he eventually developed one, but he was bigger. And it happens, you know, throughout his growth phase. In jujitsu, if you have a new student who comes in and somebody goes and lays cross-eyed on him, or somebody, you know, other people say side control, he, 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 he panics and he stops because he can't breathe because his rib cage is getting crushed, right? Or somebody goes and knee on the bellies on him. Same situation. You're not used to it. You panic and you just stop. You say, oh, I, can't, I can't deal with it anymore <clears throat> because you're not used to the pressure. Or you could be training with somebody who's just a lot better than you. And no matter what, it's relentless and relentless. He's just on you and on you and on you. No matter what, you can't get out of the bad position. And you succumb to the pressure. But... Six months from then, one year from then, what happened on your first day, first week, first month, no longer happens. That pressure that you received is nothing. It's a non-factor. In fact, you deal with a lot more physical pressure from your, your opponents now as you get better, right? <clears throat> so that pressure that you got early on built you to what you are today in your game. So now let's think about our kids. Right? I'm very passionate about teaching kids. We don't have a large kids program. Most of our kids are kids of our existing members. We don't have the infrastructure for a large kids program like a lot of schools do. But we do teach kids nonetheless. And one of the pressures that kids come through, that we all as kids went through, and I know that those of you adults that are around, you can, you can probably really, I say probably because you may not have been a victim of it, and it's bullying. In today's American society, I'm not sure how it is around the world, but in today's American society in the, in the schools, they are very much on an anti-bully mission, trying to abolish bullying. So they don't necessarily have kids, you know, they, they don't want to have any kids get in fights. And if a kid does get in a fight, then there's a big um, punishment for both. So by taking away all chances of bullying or trying to, you actually create a situation that in my mind is far worse. So I'll give you an example. You have a kid who's within his four walls of his school and it's a very sterile society and any hint of bullying activity or attitudes or words, a teacher will intervene and stop it right there, nip it right in the bud. Or that kid who is talked to will then go to a teacher or, or something, you know, because it's, you know, do something, say something or something like that. I don't know what the, what the, say, the saying is now. But they say, you know, so-and-so bullied me or so-and-so was picking on me. Okay, people did that when I was a kid too, but that was rare. It was more, is somebody picking on you? You're like, no, and even though somebody was. Why? Because you knew that if you told, then chances are you would get it even worse. That's where you're walking home from school and that's where they, they get you after school. A kid might have been afraid walking home because his thought was, oh, you know, Johnny's gonna, gonna beat me up after school because he told me he was going to. So he's walking after school home and guess what Johnny does show up? It's off campus. I guess you, they could go back and scold the kids, punish the kids later for something happening the next day, but really what could you do, right? So what happens is, you know, the kid goes home, eventually gets home and tells his mom or dad, you know, so-and-so Johnny's been, uh, been picking on me and he's harassing me on the way home. So what will happen is you as a parent will then go to the school and you talk to the school principal or the assistant principal, whoever's in charge, and say, you know what, we've got to have this Johnny kid stop bullying my kid. So then the principal will talk to Johnny and say, Johnny, there's going to be a big you know, penalty. And the parents are called in. It's a, it's a big thing. Well, Johnny may stop or he may not. And your kid may continue to get hassled maybe by other kids this time because you know, it's like, oh, what are you going to, your mommy's going to come and step in for you all the time or something. And, you know, that's what it was when I was growing up. But that never happened. I never got the benefit of that. Instead, I had to deal with the bully myself. And me being a small guy, I was a small kid. So I got picked on kind of a lot. 
But one day I came home and I said, hey, dad, you know, so-and-so hit me today. So he said, hit him back. And I go, I can't hit him back. He says, yeah, you can. And I said, but then I'll get in trouble. He says, did you start the fight? No. He says, then hit him back. And he, so I said, okay. So I get picked on and guess what? I hit the guy back. And the bully's kind of shocked, like, what, what just happened here? Nobody hits me back, right? You know, I, I'm, I'm always the one dominating on people. And that person now doesn't know what to do. Now, maybe there is a fight. But here's the thing. If he and I got into a fight, and even if I lost the fight, I just kept fighting and fighting and fighting to the point where, for him, it would have been easier for him to just go pick on somebody else. So chances are, he's not going to pick on me again. If he does, then that's when I'm going to have to figure something out, right? I'm going to have to figure out how to kick his ass. And there was, there actually was a situation where um, I did get picked on. And this was like in first grade, called me a Jap and all kind of stuff and shoved me. And, you know, that was, that was first grade. And I remembered it, right? The thing is, a victim never really forgets. The bully will forget because to them it's nothing. But to the victim, you'll remember, well, come fourth grade, I was ready to throw down with this guy. Um, but by then, he, he just kind of backed off. And then I never had that problem again. And I had bullies in middle school, and I dealt with it. You know, I never started a fight. You know, I was lucky enough to go to prep school, but, you know, with a school like that, you know, one fight, you're out. Well, I got into like five. And I never got kicked out for fighting. Academics, different story. Eighth grade, but I got back in, so I was thankful I was able to graduate from it. But for fighting, no, because I was never the one that started it. And you'd look at you'd look at who I fought. You know, the the the, the dean of the dean of students would look at me, Ryan Young, got into a fight. You know, why are you guys fighting? And I said, because Bruce hit me. Well, why did he hit you? She's I don't know, right? And then, but you look at Bruce's face, and his face looks like he'd been in a fight, whereas I don't look like I've been in a fight. I'm like, well, I just you know. He pushed me, shoved me, and I hit him back, right? And after you look at it that way, it's like, yeah, what can you do? Had he not come on to come and, and hassled me, there would have been no fight because why am I going to pick on somebody who's almost six foot tall in seventh or eighth grade? I'm not going to, right? So I told my son the same thing. I said, if you get into a fight, I'm going to ask questions. I'm not going to just react. And the question I'm going to ask is, how did it start? And if you're involved in how it started, you're going to have to answer to me. On the other hand, if you had nothing to do with the start of it, wrong place, wrong time, or maybe somebody's just picking on you, then I'll back you up every step of the way and every single time it happens. So thankfully, my son never got into a fight. And well, I take it back. He got one to sixth grade, in fifth or sixth grade. But you know, when they're that age, when they're fighting. They're not really fighting. Um, yeah, and it's, Rusty's going like this. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't really a fight, but, um, but he got in trouble. He got a one day suspension, but he didn't start it. So I took him home that day. I picked him up early, took him home and we went to go do something, something fun. I can't remember what it was, uh, because there was no penalty in my mind for, for what happened. So let's look at it this way. If you don't put your kids or let them deal with these pressures when they're kids, they'll have a harder time dealing with pressures in life later on. Because just because you leave the school doesn't mean that they're not going to come into trouble. They're not, that they're not going to come into a bully. If you don't have a bully in elementary school, you have one in middle school. If you don't have one in middle school, you have one in college, if you, uh, high school or college or in the workforce. And in fact, um, Master Dave and I, Dave Kama, we were just talking about how at his job, there's a situation where one particular employee was getting bullied by about four other guys. Not really physically bullied, but more on the job site, making him do things that he doesn't have to do normally, but because they were just looking to irk him, they were giving him a bunch of the crap things to do um, because they had the power to do it. And that's a form of bullying at work. and. You know, they end up having to reprimand them for doing that because it was unnecessary. But if the, the person who was the victim of it didn't learn how to deal with something like that from his childhood, then he may not have been able to deal with it as well as an adult. So don't get onto this whole 
anti-bullying thing because by doing so, you're just going to be pushing the problem further out. You know, if you push a beach ball underwater in a pool, the further down you push it, the harder it is going, is, is going to be to hold it down. So just deal with it when it's still a small situation and then move on from there. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys and I'm thinking this might spark a debate. If it doesn't, that's fine. Consider what I said and let me know where I'm wrong. Anyway, I hope your training has been going well and I hope you all take care. Happy training. Bye-bye now.